Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Hard Truth Show. Um, hopefully, the live stream is looking good. I hope I'm oriented correctly. Um, if I'm not, please somebody let me know. I'll uh, definitely have to adjust that out here. Um, I'm going to give this just a second to make sure that the stream's flowing good. Preview this right here, make sure. I've started figuring some of this stuff out, guys, how that we're broadcasting and everything to make sure this uh, this orienting the uh, camera is not going to be an issue anymore. Alright, stream looks good. Can somebody just let me know if y'all can see me properly? I don't want to be like looking sideways here. Um, somebody, somebody said, who disliked you right away? Somebody, we must have a hater up in the building tonight. Um, guys, I just want to make sure the stream's running right. If somebody will let me know, um, it's sideways. It's sideways. Okay. But I mean, am I oriented right where y'all can see me or I'm turned sideways? You are sideways. Somebody said, you're good, Lucas. You are sideways. Okay, everybody's saying I'm sideways. Give me just a second, guys. I'm going to correct this on the on the cam right here. Uh, give me just a second. Apologize for the technical difficulties. I don't know why I went by um, the U.S. Cellular tonight. and um, Or, I'm sorry, earlier today. And apparently my service wasn't working properly. So I got them to fix that. Apparently on the X, the uh, iPhone XRs, there was an update or something. And if you didn't get it updated right with the new Apple update, then apparently, um, apparently your service would just drop on your antenna. So I was like, well, that's convenient. So are we good to go now, guys? Is it correct? Are we sideways? Everything good? Audio good? Just want to make sure... There we go. All right, somebody said you good. Appreciate it. Okay, so um, I want to just check out a few comments here real quick because there's a lot of y'all piling in the building tonight, um, and then we'll get going here. I see some faces. I know Snow Wolf's in the building. Hey, how's it going, girl? Um, let's see. I see a lot of familiar folks near JD, Donna, Kingdom Truther, Sylvia. There's a lot of y'all. Somebody said... Uh, Oh, so he said I was right because they had their phone turned sideways. That's great. <laughs> oh, everybody says it's good. It's good. Uh, we can see your head only. Right, let's get those likes up, guys. I appreciate that. All right, so now tonight's live stream is going to be, I think, one of my personal favorites because, I mean, this is what I specialize in, in business and in life. And, guys, if you haven't checked out offgridcontracting.com, this live stream tonight is sponsored by my business because um, if, if you want to go off grid, like that's what we specialize in doing. Um, now, we're almost booked up for the rest of the year because of uh, pretty much Rona 19 and a lot of other things that's went on. But now, I'm still taking bookings for next year too and, and late fall, winter, um, some stuff for this year. I'm going to go over 10 points um, that I think personally are some of the the most powerful points that most people don't think about um, whenever you're going off grid. And please keep in mind that I've been doing this for folks now. We're in our seventh year officially in business. I've been dabbling in this for probably over a decade. Um, and I've seen a lot of stuff go on, okay? Um, I even remember way back when, um, when it like may, used to make the news, where people would get in trouble for going off grid. Like I think it was that guy in Alabama. He was a military vet. Um, had his own rain catchment, solar power, the whole nine yards. City come down on him hard because he was, you know, setting himself free. I mean, um, there's a lot of this stuff, guys, um, that we're going to get into tonight. It's going to be heavy duty. Number 10 is the uh, hardest hitter, I think, of them all, and I saved it for last because, I mean, it's intense. A uh, couple notes. Uh, for those that's played The Last of Us on PS3 or 4, you kind of see how I uh, got the little logo up there tonight. It kind of looks like a throwback to the Last of Us game where it says going off grid. Um, but anyway, here's the deal. Um, I'm getting married this weekend uh, on the Pagan Roman calendar. Um, but I'm going to be taking a two-week siesta from YouTube, social media, life, business, etc. pretty much. Um, except for like one little project I'm doing business-wise I, I can't get around. But 
I'm taking two weeks siesta, so you will see me tonight, you will see me tomorrow night, and then I'll see you guys in two weeks, y'all willing. Um, and I just think it'll be a good time for me to take a step back from life, take a breather, especially with as crazy as year goes. A social media fast, absolutely. Thank you guys for everybody that's said congrats. I, I really appreciate you. Um, and, and thanks for the likes, everybody. It's getting them up. I appreciate you. And um, so here's the deal. I'm going to be taking a break from that. But when we come back, man, we're going to just be smashing it out. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to get right into this tonight. And guys, I'm going to try to um, go through this pretty um, pretty quickly if possible. But I'm not going to like just blast through it because when I'm done, I want to take at least... Good 30, 40 minutes and answer people's questions that may not be addressed during this because this is, this is, I'm pretty much addressing stuff that people don't think about, okay, because I've seen it a lot um, in the field. All right, so with that said, the first point tonight, everybody got their notepad, pencils, church is in session. All right, we are going off grid. I appreciate you guys. Uh, blessings to everybody. Uh, guys, I, I want to see everybody have a partner in life and be happy and you know, have shalom. Uh, the world comes to take you shalom every day. And, you know, home and your partner is where you need to come to to find peace. I mean, your home should not be a war zone. Uh, somebody said, uh, blessings you and Abby. Did you get my text last week? I, I, I don't know, brother, if I did. I swear so many people have texted me, guys. Um, and there's been so much madness surrounding this wedding and all the other stuff and traveling that's going on. Um, I may have missed you. And, guys, if I do miss you, please... I'm not ignoring you. Just hit me up, 7 prepper at gmail.com, the number 7, and then trumpetsprepper at gmail.com, and I'll be glad to hit you back. Matter of fact, I almost forgot that, and I promise we're going to get in these points. If somebody emailed me this, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is why it makes me happy to know that what I do here on this channel is not in vain. Um, now, folks, I've got a bunch of emails that I'm going to check out at night while I'm gone this week and try to catch up because a lot of people have emailed me. Here's one that somebody emailed me, and I haven't emailed them back yet, but I'm going to, and uh, I wanted to read it on the channel now that somebody hit me this five days ago, uh, and I want to share it in this live stream. Uh, I'm not going to say their last name for privacy, but the first name is Jenny. It says, hey man, just wanted to say I watched a video live chat a few weeks ago about preparing for the future, moving to the woods, etc., that sort of thing. My husband and I prayed about this a lot and felt like, yeah, time to get out of Dodge, out of our town, which is surrounded by larger cities. Something we wanted to do for years, but have been procrastinating. And we all procrastinate. Uh, that was, I believe, four weeks ago. We are moving to a cabin in the mountains by the end of the month, homeschooling the kids in a low-population state. Our place has wood stove, creek, and two huge greenhouses for growing our own food. My husband was offered a good job out of the blue. It all came together effortlessly. It's wild. Your videos helped us get moving. We just wanted to say, or we just want to say thank you. And you know what? All praise be unto the Most High Yah. Um, that's what I got to say about that. So anyway, guys, that just uh, that made my whole day right there when I read that. And because I get down sometimes, I'm telling you, this world we wake up every day, and if you imagine life as a battery, um, you know, it's like I start my day some days, and literally by lunchtime, something's done sucked fifty percent of my shalom out of my battery. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the world tries to take peace every day, guys. Um, and it's just getting crazier and crazier out there. So. I'm telling you, when I read stuff like that, it makes my whole day, all right? Because I want to see everybody happy, healthy, and at peace. All right, so here we go. Point number one. Everybody get their notepad. There is never enough money when you go off-grid. I don't care, unless you're Jeff Bezos, um, evil Bill Gates, um, Donald J. Trump. Um, I'm just trying to think else. Let's see, Joe Biden and them, ain't they, got, ain't they the ones that got had the thing going on in Ukraine that all their family members were tied into the banking cartel thing. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. If you, unless you are just a multi-billion trillionaire or whatever, money, there's going to be uh, some point that um, you're just not going to have enough money. And what I always ask every client that emails me, whether I've worked for hundreds of people now, um, I can't tell you how many people I've, I've, I've just dealt with, either consulted for, traveled the world, either consulted or worked for, uh, domestic consulted or worked for, uh, done projects and shipped to, uh, whether it's off grid, I mean, from greenhouse and aquaponics, uh, you name it, guys. Wind power, I mean, the whole nine yards. Worked on tiny houses, you name it. Uh, I, I've always asked people these questions pretty much. This has become a standardized thing I always try to ask people is what do you want to accomplish and what is your budget? 
Because at the end of the day, it's like Messiah um, gave that parable, and I should have pulled this up, you know, is pretty much, is no man goes to build nothing, pretty much, just summarizing, that he don't sit down and count the cost, whether he be sufficient to finish it, right? So the thing is, is you really need to prioritize what you want to accomplish. And and I'm serious, like, I know that you might be like, well, Luke, that's stupid. I at least knew that point. But, I mean, like, that's something that people really don't cover their bases on. Um, I've always looked at that situation, because I'll give you an example. I have a pet project. Um, you ever called, heard the sunk cost fallacy? It's like, well, I poured money into it. I might as well pour some money, more money into it. Or I've been in a relationship for 10 years, and my man just keeps beating me. Um, but you know what? I'm going to keep staying in it because I've been in it so long. You know what I'm saying? That's like the sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> and I maybe took that a little extreme. I don't want nobody getting beat. But I have this pet project on the farm where I've been working on off-grid uh, power for the farm ever since like 2015 on the farm. Um, yeah, pretty much around the time Doomsday Preppers were passed. And um, anyway, I got the wind turbine up. I got the wire in the ground. I got the three-phase hooked to the rectifier. Now I got a battery bank in there, you know, all that's left now is hooking the solar wiring's hooked in, just gotta put some solar panels out and put a solar charge controller up and an inverter on the wall. And honestly, if I had all the parts and the world fell apart, I could really do it in one day with my skill set. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant. I'm just saying like a lot of this stuff, it is pet projects. So if you do a little alone now, great. But you know, if we have some of this stuff put back when the world does fall apart, at least you're that much further ahead. Um, and so pet projects ain't really a bad thing. But at the end of the day, when it really does come crunch time, you need to finish it. You need to be able to finish it. I'm just saying. Number two. Now, this is a great book to buy. I honestly feel like that if you're looking to go off grid, um, you're looking to relocate out of this country, um, I feel like it is required reading. And it is Joel Scalson's uh, third edition print of strategic relocation. Guys, I'm sorry I don't have my copy to share with you. Um, I actually uh, left it with... Um, a church, a Hebrew Israelite church in um, New York when I went up there to speak. Hey, shalom, everybody coming in the building a little later. Love y'all. Um, so anyway, um, I left it with them, and um, anyway, their pastor to pass around. And um, here's the deal. That book has, like, the military installations. It has um, high-risk areas. It, ha it just has so much information um, to consider because when you go to move somewhere, there's a lot of factors to take in mind. And Joel Scalson's strategic relocation book um, is fundamental for if you're going to relocate. I just think it is required reading at this current point in conjuncture. Um, now, you can get that at j just j Google Joel Scalson's strategic relocation. I think you can order it direct from his website. You can also get it straight up off Amazon. Um, but excellent read. And it may be in its fourth edition by now. I mean, because that thing's been redefined and redefined. Um, all right, next one, number point number three. You got to always factor this is the climate region, climate and region, all right, because I've worked for a lot of different people. Uh, now, FEMA camp locations, that's interesting. You know what? I can't remember if stuff like that was marked in the back, like in the special section. Hey, shout out to uh, Yako Yisrael for the $9.99 uh, super chat, guys. I really appreciate the funding on the channel here lately. You guys have helped contribute to this channel. Um, please note, um, I think it was Brother Daniel and um, Elijah the other day, um, I think was the two that donated. Um, that funds went to pay the insurance premium for the conference because we had to have insurance for the conference, put that funds toward that. Hey, love you, brother. I appreciate you. Um, uh, you know, everybody that's donated, I really do hope that you can get a ticket and come to the conference because the tickets are free. And I, I, I want everybody to be able to come. And I understand there's only room for like, you know, I uh, think 250 people this, this first time through. But like, everybody's donated. For crying out loud, please get a ticket because they're free. All right? And I just don't want you to have contributed something and then not be able to be a part of it. Now, keep in mind, we're going to live stream it. But there's nothing that beats being there in person. Okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. So here's the deal. Um, you know, the, the climate and region, all right, this is, um, this is a big thing. And guys, I'll take a pause at five and go through some of the comments is because now I've worked all across the country. And like I said, I've, I've, when is the conference? It's August 15th, 16th, um, of this year. You can go to sounding the to get the tickets guys links in the video description below. Also on the 14th there, uh, there's going to be a baptism service in Greenbrier park out here. 
the National Park um, up here in the Smokies. So all the info is on the website. Just check it out. Um, just click the tab for the conference this year. All right. Um, now here's the deal. These are the big seven. All right. Water, shelter, food, sanitation, power, security, communication. These are the seven points in that realm of going off grid. Now, I'm just covering basics here, but this is like some stuff people may not know some of this stuff. Water is critical. I, you know, when I go out and survey um, for customers before we start doing their off-grid construction, keep in mind sometimes, guys, we go in and put the infrastructure in and the power and the water before people even get their house built. I mean, like, we're, we're some of the first boots on the ground, you know, pathfinders, I call it. So when we go in and look at a property, especially if I go, um, if you want to check out my buddy at Cry Like Realty, if you're here in Tennessee, Kevin O'Brien, um, he, he specializes in homesteads and off-grid stuff, uh, properties. Worked with him a lot over the years, good friend. Um, if you look at the situation buying property, I've only went to a couple different customers over the years, and I'm talking now in seven, this is year seven of official business, that we've actually been able to look at property and be like, yeah, not only do you have good running water, not only can you use it, but um, you, know, you could use hydroelectric power on this. Dude, if you can get property with water on it, it is paramount. Um, next thing is shelter, guys. Now, I'm going to get into my thought process on shelter later, but you've got to have something sustainable. Now, whether that's a tiny house, whether that's a yard, a cabin, um, a big home, an RV, a tiny house on wheels. I think I said tiny house. But anyway, like, y y shelter is something to think about. Food. You know, uh, permaculture is a huge thing. If you're going to buy a property, just plant things that's going to come back every year, like blueberry bushes and raspberry bushes and you know, um, um, you know, just plant thing, blackberry vines, you know, stuff that's going to return each year, um, you know, fruit trees, stuff like that, because, uh, you know, that's the things that's going to be precious later down the road, even when you're not planning, able to plant a garden, this kind of stuff comes back constantly, right? so not just the normal 20-year shelf life and vegetable garden, stuff like that, you really want to think about that um, with your land and stuff, uh, permaculture, sanitation, guys. Sanitation is critical. Now, there's a lot of ways to get around having to get a septic uh, permit nowadays. Um, you can get it in the the containment units, haul it off to RV waste stations. I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can beat the system nowadays on the sanitation thing. Power, guys, it, when it comes to off-grid, you if you have power, you can do just about anything you want to off-grid. And I really encourage you that whether it's just a small solar setup, and hey, it don't have to be me doing it. Listen, there's plenty of do-it-yourself videos on YouTube. I've showed people do it yourself on YouTube for way, way years back now. Um, listen, it can be done on the cheap. Now, when you really want to start pairing uh, uh, massive off-grid stuff and things like that, you know, hey, that's all fine and good. It's just one of those deals where, you know, the budget, security, guys, you know, you can't have enough. Um, matter of fact, I want to show you all this. I uh, Apparently, Goat Guns makes these. They're like third-scale replicas. I mean, I put mine together the other day. The reason I said this, I'm going to post like two videos up um, probably next week just dabbling. I've been working with the uh, time lapse uh, where stuff, you know, takes pictures over uh, course time. I've been trying to learn to do a lot better on video editing, like with our uh, install builds out in the field. Uh, time lapse with construction so uh, I was practicing with putting this together in my AR-15 for uh, some more artwork to go on the wall but it's pretty cool I mean even the uh, I'll get the mag out here in a second I'll show you uh, it's a little off topic but even the bullets <laughs> are third scale man it's crazy uh, but anyway all right anyway you'll you'll see that up I'm just goofing off with some uh, video so if you see that it's just me practicing with time lapse but dude, like security, you cannot have enough security um, for your home. Everybody needs to know how to shoot. Uh, guys, we're living in perilous times. I mean, I can't overly state the importance of a pew pew device. All right, um, next up is communication. All right, guys. Uh, man, it, it is just massively important uh, communication because ham radio operators like in california like i think it's in california they're wanting to do away with the ham radio operator thing um i went and got my license right i mean like it, it's like it's massive important um to have the be ability to communicate with one another because i'm telling you one day like cell phones things like that, that that's probably going to be a thing of the past all right uh when it all hits the fan all right but that's the big seven that really needs to be rotational in your mind like these are the things i'm dealing with 
Now, number four is taxes, taxes, taxes. You can have an off-grid mansion, all right? Um, but if it comes taxes time and you don't pay your land taxes, they can literally come and sell your land out from under you. True story. True story. And matter of fact, it's getting harder and harder, apparently, at some county, some districts, some states, to pay taxes ahead in advance because some people will try to pay their taxes for years in advance, and I think that's a great thing. Um, that's why I want to have my driver's license. We'll have a lot of things that, you know, like um, uh, later down the road, they're going to be like, well, you can't get it renewed because you don't have the mark of the beast or blah, blah, blah. Who knows? They'll probably take it away from you because you don't have the mark of the beast. But anyway, like at least you can try to be preemptive about some of this stuff. And taxes is a big kicker on people's land, guys, because um, I know later down the road when the world falls completely apart, is the tax assessor, is the state probably going to come seize your land? Mm, I don't know. But um, this is something you really do need to be mindful of, okay? Now, I'm going to cover one more point. We're going to do number five. And then I'm going to take a break and catch up some of these comments right here. And give me just a second here. All right, so number five is mobility. Um, you know, I've been to a lot of people's places. And they will literally live here. And they're off-grid places, like way out in the middle of nowhere. You better know for sure that you can get there to your off-grid property um, and, and bug-out location. Because later down the road, uh, you know, I've developed a lot of nice places. And I'm like, Flip, what's going to happen when you, like, clear across the country working? Um, and then you can't get back to your, your place that, um, that you were, you know, planning on bugging out to. I mean, uh, then that's a waste. You know, so that's something that really needs to be considered. Um, you know, I travel all across the country all the time, guys. I live out of a backpack, and I just feel like... Um, you know, when it all hits the fan, I'm going to kind of be in like a Mad Max situation. Um, and I really don't know where I'm going to be and what I'm going to be doing, who I'm going to be around. But, you know, I ask the most high anymore to please put me where you want, doing what you want, with who you want. Um, and I need to start asking them how you want it. Um, and, you know, like anymore when things don't go right the way that I want it, you know what I do is I just stop and I, I, I did it today. Some stuff didn't go right. And I said, you know what, all praise be unto you, most high, y'all. And thank you for everything bad. Um, that's happened to me because you know even though it was bad I learned from it or I grew from it you know so that's I've tried to change my mentality on some of that stuff too guys um, so anyway let me back up here and read a few of these comments from everybody that's up in the house tonight uh, somebody said no problem Lucas appreciate you brother Yako. Um, the hammer he uh, he who seeks to save his life shall lose it yeah but you know guys if you look at that in context I really think that some of that if you could literally place that on those that take the mark. They're trying to save their life in this world, and they literally lose it for the one to come. And um, for anybody that has time, I encourage you to read Second Baruch chapter 51. Dude, it is heavy duty for the last days. Heavy duty. If you don't have time to read the whole book, go to chapter 51. Um, and then there's another chapter on down there, folks, For especially for those of us of the nations, that it literally breaks down that there will be people from the nations, you know, certain portions of the people of the nations that will be saved to see the kingdom. And, man, that is just... Second Baruch is just amazing, man. Um, it's going down through here. Somebody said, uh, when is the conference? I got that one. I caught that one on the fly. Uh, somebody said, cargo trailer that I converted into a camper. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, somebody said, I'm not going to say JC in here, guys, but somebody said, yeah, I'm just convert that to the true name. Yahushua only had little. And that's true. But, you know, Yahushua was on a mission, you know. Um, somebody said, who will be baptized in the conference? Um, so, I plan to help. Um, I'm probably going to ask um, Brother William Brown if he comes up ahead of time. Um, I, I've, I've got a couple people on my hit list I was thinking about asking. Um, I'm working that out right now, guys. I know some of the guys that help out. Uh, with Loud Cry Ministries, is going to get them to help, and uh, some folks that we fellowship here at the local assembly to help, because uh, there's a lot of people uh, that signing up to be baptized. It's crazy. I mean, there's folks, some of you folks from all the way across the nation in California, it blows my mind. I mean, they just, you know, I hope we have a wonderful day together out there. Uh, somebody said that's right. Uh, wow, I'm thinking about not even staying in this country. Guys, here's the deal. Um, I want to get up out of this country. Uh, brother hit me up the other night and literally said to me, he said, um, brother, we got a piece of acreage down here in Belize. And dead serious, I wouldn't have told you you have it if, if you didn't want you to come here. 
And I tell you what, man, I, I, I've literally thrown around Costa Rica, Belize, and Fiji. Um, problem is, guys, is, you know, anywhere you go, you always run in this situation where it's like, are you allowed to have a Pew Pew device? Um, you know, me and my family almost moved to uh, Australia in 2011. And, um, you know, I was right about the time the gun laws enacted, and, and then we ended up not selling the farm and moving. Um, and praise y'all for that, because, man, Australia's been a freaking mess ever since. Uh, not to mention all the fires and everything else went on down there uh, in the recent events. But, uh, you know, like with Fiji, the whole thing that turned me on to Fiji was it was $50,000. or fifty thousand dollars. I think you can get citizenship status. Then not only can you get citizenship status, but you can get um, your passport. Uh, I think that gets you a tiny house cargo container on uh, white sandy beaches. Um, you get you a lease with the government for the land for, I don't know, it's like 99-year lease. Dude, it's intense. I mean, like, you can, for anybody that's got $50,000, you just want to get up out of here tomorrow and go to Fiji, dude. I mean, you can pretty much freaking check out. All right. Um, what was it? The Lolita Express with Epstein Island. Well, instead of, uh, instead of some of that shady business going on like they done, you can actually go legitimately go to the airport, check on up out of here, and get you uh, into, uh, uh, into a new place. And somebody donated... $20, thank you Donna Nichols uh, for the $20 donation, guys. I really appreciate donations on here, guys, because I, I'm, I'm, here's here's the deal, if y'all don't know. Um, I've been demonetized on this channel pretty much since I started the Hard Truth Show. Um, I knew I ran the risk doing that because I'm finally open and up and just calling stuff like it is and just saying what's on my mind. And you know what? That's cool. It's all good. Um, I ain't been up about it. I knew the risk when I started it, um, you know. But uh, so he said, Baruch is one of my favorites. Dude, I, guys, when I get done, I'm currently in Baruch. I'm almost done. Um, and when I'm done reading it, probably while I'm gone on my honeymoon, I'm going to start immediately back over and suck up every red pill out of that book I can again. Uh, amazing book. Just absolutely astonishing. One of my favorite of all time. Um, somebody said, uh, the door for leaving this country is slowly closing, to be honest. Yeah, guys, that wall's not going up. To keep our Latino friends out from over over the border uh, is to keep us from going over to them when stuff hits the fan. Uh, somebody says, especially with the CV-19 starting to flare back up, they're going to use this BLM protest uh, even to probably recreate an amplified more intense CV-20. Guys, I tell you what, man, it's going to get some crazy times out there. Somebody says, I'm going to look at land and or a home in Jamaica, then file for my family for dual citizenship. There you go. There you go. Um, cause guys, I mean, a lot of people, they, a lot of, and I hear this especially from Hebrew Israelites, and I mean no disrespect, but I hear them, I hear a lot of street preaching too. It's like, oh, we're living in Babylon. We live in second Egypt. And I'm like, we live in the second beast of revelation. I'm like, who cares what any other label you want to put on it? We are in a cesspool of sin. If y'all don't think y'all is going to judge America, y'all lost your mind. I don't care you young, old, gray of head, advanced in years. I will look you straight in the face and tell you have lost your mind if you think this place ain't going to be judged. I don't know I don't know where your head's at because this. Um, if I was the most high, I'd burn this place to the ground and then I'd nuke it again because of how wicked it is. You know, America is like, I, the number one thing that comes to my mind, if, if you asked me, you said, okay, Luke, right now you are the master and I don't want to ever set in the seat of the master. I'm not like Hashitan. I don't I, matter of fact I'd be glad with being a cut bearer in a new kingdom uh, or a doorkeeper. Um, but I literally would roast this country to the ground for one reason alone. I'm gonna give you thirty seconds or, or three seconds to guess, all right? Abortion. The abortion meals in this country, I thought at least Rona nineteen shut down um the abortion meals. To my surprise, I found out that... Oh, somebody said it. Somebody guessed it. Abortion. Yep, that was it. Yeah, because I, I, I know this feeds slow on my chat thing. But, yep, somebody guessed it. Like, right as I was saying it there. Yep, abortion. Because, man... Uh, and that's what he's going to burn do. Burn it down. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, guys, it makes me so sick. Oh, it makes me so sick. And, um, oh, anyway. So, guys, we're going to get back into this. Um, and then I'll pick back up in the comments in a minute. Uh, number six, we really need, if you're going to go off grid, and this is something, now I don't have this conversation with all my clients um, that I work for, but, but the people that love y'all, I'll, I'll have this talk, but we really need to consider the mark of the beast factor. Wherever you're going to go off grid, you really need to build an infrastructure and a lifestyle that sustains you, 
that you really have limited interaction at that point with the system. Now, I'm not saying you can't come and go and live your life. I'm just saying visit Sodom and Gomorrah sparsely, okay? Because the mark of the beast situation that's going to go into place, people laugh at me over the Tesla truck. They're like, look, you're stupid. You shouldn't get your Tesla truck, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, bro, what are you going to do when you can't freaking get gas? What are you going to do when you go to the gas pump? I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. We need you to scan your hand. How's that working out for you? All right? Yeah, man, I might be stuck at the house for a few more days, but my solar panels on my truck are charging my truck from the most high y'all's light set in the sky and affirm it in the Shemayim above on this flat earth that he created in Genesis 1. There you go. There's my sermon for tonight. I mean, like, this is the stuff we need to really consider because, like, you can't freaking buy gas later down the road. Um, you, you, you just can't do half this stuff. The convenience factor is gone. The mark of the beast thing is no joke, folks. Like, somebody shared this meme, and it really hit me. Like, I was visiting, um, I was visiting with Kevin at his real estate office, and me and him were talking about this, this meme, that it said, no mass, no service. And it said, um, it had, it had the meme split, and then it said, uh, no mark, no service. It was just like, replace this with no mark, no service. And I'm like, that's deep. Because, like, really, we are being pre-programmed currently to receive the mark of the beast. Um, it's ridiculous. And somebody said, Lucas, do you go to Jamaica and put up some... Oh, yeah, I'll go to Jamaica. I've been down in Jamaica. I love Jamaica. Remember, folks, the left side of the road is the right side of the road. Because the right side of the road is suicide. <laughs> I'll never forget the driving lesson down there. Um, but anyway, uh, somebody said, what's the truck? It's the um, Tesla Cyber Truck. Um, uh Let's see. Somebody said, Brother Luke, your faith in the Most High and the end time prophecy is very strong. That's why I love it, bro. Well, man, all right, guys, I'll tell you, uh, I love Most High. All I got left pretty much is him, and I'm going to get into some stuff on point 10. Uh, but I'll tell you what, it's been a crazy journey out of Babylon. It's just been a cra This right here is our greatest prison in the world. Dude, I'm telling you, this mind is the greatest prison in the world. Uh, but I, we'll get there. We'll get there tonight. Um, how, what am I doing on time? Okay, I want to wrap this here pretty soon so we can talk. Um, num point number seven. Now, this is one, guys, that I, I don't want to sound hypocritical. Um, th this is something that, that's really heavy duty on my mind. It's social media, finances, and connections. Now, y'all know, if y'all followed my channel for years, you know I'm an empathic person and I love people. I really want to see people made in the kingdom. But I'm at the point where I'm done dealing with some people. Like, I just don't want to be connected to them. I don't want to touch them. I don't want their demons coming over on me and their bad energy coming over on me. Um, I, I've dropped a lot of connections in the past couple of years, and I don't really miss anybody that left out of my life. And I don't mean to sound like mean. I'm just glad they're gone. Um, now, the finances situation, guys, I have, um, I don't know about y'all, but I've been trying to diversify funding. Like when, every time I fly anymore, I make this a rule. This is my rule. Um, that when I fly anymore, I go to the Amex exchange or whatever, um, and I'll have them give me like euros or maybe next trip I'll grab pesos. And I'm trying to diversify like liquid cash because I'm going to maybe next year when I don't have to, um, you know, no longer with a divorce agreement, have to pay my ex-wife 20% of my business. Um, I'm going to start dedicating like 10% of that, that funding or something like that now that I'm not paying it out no more because of a divorce court. Um, I'm going to put that toward like a run bag. That's different to like a go bag because like if you see these movies where I got a run bag, and that's what I call it, is that if you have to go in your house and you got 30 seconds to grab what you need, I'm going to have me another Ed Safir. I'm going to have me a stack of cash. I'm going to have me like a pistol with a suppressor. Um, I'm going to have me, I've got, I'm going to put me a whole list together of stuff for a run bag. And um, I've been, like I said, I've been stacking cash every chance I can get at the Amex airtime that I fly anymore. Um, and I think that's something you really need to do. And not only that, you know, if people, if, if you're somebody on here that's wealthy and you can like get you an offshore account, stuff like that. Um, you know, I haven't gotten into the, uh, what the flip is that called? Uh, cryptocurrency. I haven't got into that. I don't know. I don't know how, any, if anybody wants to commentate how that works, I don't know. I've not dabbled in it because I believe in that stay in your lane policy. And I don't know the first thing about it hardly to even tell you yay, nay, for against so i'm just gonna keep my mouth shut on that but like there's there's a lot of opportunities out there i think that we need to really start getting educated and diversify on because who knows i mean this digital currency thing and stuff like this guys it's it's freaking me out a little bit anymore um especially that it ended up in the uh the bill 
um, for the initial stimulus package. And don't forget, stimulus 2.0 is coming too, looks like. All right, and the last thing on that point is social media. Like, now, I don't know about everybody else, but now, I'm not a big fan of Instagram. I think, personally, it is damaging women's mental health because that instant gratification, instant validation, that that's, listen, Instagram even made a deal about that recently, about to take the like feature away on stump stuff or the heart count because it was messing people up. Now, the fact that a social media institution even points that out tells you there's something there. Um, and I'm not trying to beat up on women on this thing. I'm just telling you guys, like, social media is toxic. I think we've, it, it is destroyed marriages. I mean, you can flip slide Tinder and deny somebody's in your DMs on Instagram and then trouble ensues. And, guys, Facebook, like, I, I've uh, pretty much axed all the stuff out of my life except for, see, I'm, I'm on the fence what to do with communicating with a lot of you guys, and especially family and friends that follow on here. I love y'all, and like I was talking with Brother Akeen like over in Okinawa or whatever the other day on Facebook, and it's like, I don't know how I'm going to pull that off um, without something like that, so I'm trying to figure out, do I need to Skype people? How do I need to work around that one? Because um, pretty much all I got left is Facebook, and I'm going to run YouTube here until I ain't got to worry about YouTube, because one day they're going to just pull the plug on 7 Trump's Prepper channel, uh, unless the most high y'all intervenes, and that's going to be the end of it. And, guys, it's been a great run. If this is the last video I ever get to do, hey, love y'all. Wish you all the best. Hope we can break bread and kingdom one day. But that's that. But um, you really need to seriously consider uh, the deletion of a lot of social media because, listen, later down the road, the Karens of the world and the sellout guys are going to pick up a phone and be like, hey, yeah, yeah, uh, I know so-and-so, and, -so and um, yeah, they ain't got the mark of the beast. You need to haul them down to the FEMA camp and y'all whack their head off with a guillotine. I'm serious, guys. Like this right here, you are giving people free information um, and too much info and input into your life. All right, let me pause for just a second because I know y'all blowing up uh, comments here, and I'm gonna back up for just a second. What point we on? We are on. We got three to go here, and I'm gonna wrap this, guys, and get in the conversation. Um, somebody said, "Will you be at ITH in the summer?" I'm coming to visit Randy. Um, so now I. Uh, I'm going to be busy till mid-July. I'm going to be home, and I, I just went by and visited Randy today. And the guy, or I, I went by to visit Randy. He was actually in Knoxville, um, but I got to talk with some of the guys and um, get some game plan together because there's some houses that's going to get solar on them. Um, so I'll probably be there mid-July to dabble with some stuff, um, and then maybe in August. Um, and I don't know what September is looking like, but I'm going to be by here and there in between, uh, y'all willing. Uh, Snow Wolf, what's up? Hey, Luke, how are you? Can't wait for the 14th. Oh, yeah. It's going to be good stuff. Uh, I, I, guys, I'm excited. I'm excited for the wedding. I, I really hope I really hope it's just amazing time. Um, somebody said, Face Like the Sun YouTube channel will teach you all about crypto. That's awesome. I would love to learn that, guys. And I'm like I said, I got a lot of drive time ahead of me. Um, and, and, and actually, I need to start downloading videos for when I fly with Delta. Because, man, them are some freaking long, painful flights, all right? And, and I need to be, like, reading more and listening to stuff like that while I'm, while I'm flying instead of just trying to sleep it off. Uh, somebody said stimulus 2.0 is what is keeping the masses somewhat normal. Yeah, guys, I haven't really kept up with this two, the second stimulus check thing. Um, somebody said, yes, yeah, true. True believer in great channel, face like the sun, or canary cry radio. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, I'm serious, guys. Hey, hey, whoever told me to watch... Um, replicas when we're done with this actual content tonight i want to i want to tell y'all about that movie i watched it the other day that is some crazy stuff um anyway craig mason reasonable conversation my t or ty channel uh knows about cryptocurrency sweet guys i'll have to get back up in here tonight and write some of this down um i really do appreciate the input and like i said somebody if i don't start on this after i get to point 10 please remind me about that movie replicas i got some commentary on that so anyway Number eight, now this is a crazy one, is building codes, all right? Now, building codes are stupid. Um, there are some places that don't have a building code. Um, there are some places that, you know, they could care less about the National Electric Code, right? I'm just saying, like, some places just like, yeah, whatever it goes, man. You bought the property, have fun with it. Uh, some places, dude, you put electrical box in the wrong place, or you don't put enough electrical boxes, or you put that three feet, I mean, you get just with an inch of, being off by three foot and too many an enclosure near each. I mean, like some places is just stupid with codes. So I'm telling you guys, if you can buy a place where there's not a code enforcement office, I'm going to repeat that: a code enforcement office. That is awesome because you can do a lot of things there. Like, like here's the deal: say rain catchment's illegal, right? Now I'm not encouraging you to do crime or criminal activity. I'm just saying 
it would just so happen that say you had the ability and the parts laying there to do a rain catchment. However, when the world falls apart, who's really going to stop by and uh, check that out if you do put in a rain catchment? I'm just saying, just saying. But code enforcement laws and all this BS, please note that that poor military vet, young man that went and put his life on the line for his country, uh, when they got their house off grid, that's when everybody showed up to kick over his hot dog stand or his lemonade stand. They didn't show up to kick over his lemonade stand when he was starting on it. They didn't even kick it over in the midway. They kicked it over when he was out of the system. So I just want you to use that as a poster child and understand because, see, the way I've worked around this for years is, uh, say, okay, for example, you work in Florida. You have to be hooked to the utility grid. You have to be hooked to the utility grid. Now, I don't mean you have to use it, but you have to be hooked to it. So, um, you know, we've gotten around that uh, because we'll just draw power through the inverter and then only use the solar power from the inverter and just have the utility there as backup. I mean, guys, there's just, you've got to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And because when I deal with government people, they ain't nothing but shady cats. All they want is money. Dude, the other day, if y'all don't think this ain't true, if y'all think I come up in here and just, just run off at the mouth or lie to y'all, this is true story. So I go to the DMV the other day to get, or I'm not, not the DMV, the county clerk office to get a marriage license. Um, please keep in mind the only reason to get a marriage license because I already have prenup, so that's the only reason I went to do that. Um, but aside from that, I got a driver's license and a firearm permit license uh, renewed, the permit thing renewed. I believe the law states here in Tennessee, and you'll have to correct me on this, please don't quote me on this, but I believe that if you let your firearm permit go more than 365 calendar days, that it is no longer valid. You like actually have to go retake the training course. Now, I think that's what it is. I can't tell you exact. I literally had that thing expired for two years. They literally, all they cared was that I just gave them my money the other day, and they were glad to renew it. I was like, what in the ever-loving crap is wrong with you people? Like, they just don't even care anymore, guys. It's, it's, it's a money racket. That's all it is, I'm telling you. Um, so anyway, next one is, now this is one um, that I think is absolutely one of the, it, it's like the, the, it's the second to worst thing that can happen to you. And I, and I kind of feel like I put this in like order of least importance to like most importance. Um, but some can be equals, um, is the neighbor factor. I have seen some of the wonderful, most y'all loving people in my life. Okay. And I know there's worldly people that follow this channel, but I really want to reach out for the spiritual people right now is that I've literally seen good people move off grid, buy an amazing piece of property, and have a complete and utter tool bag as a neighbor. Guys, I think it's really important that you either have a large tract of land if you're going to get a piece of property, or you either at least fill your neighbors out or live in a community of like-minded people. As I'm going to tell you what, I literally earlier this year went to work for a customer, and I got shut down working on the job because the lady came and made an issue about the um, easement lines or whatever so the excavator guy couldn't excavate so I couldn't come out and lay ground mount for solar panels and it just kept snowballing down the road and it was drama right out of the gate for him and I feel so sorry for him um, and thankfully most high y'all intervened and he's dealt with that problem um, but I'm just saying like man the neighbor factor is a nightmare and if you're going to go off grid you can have the best of intentions um, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions too and your neighbor could be hell next door um, so, uh, yeah, I'll let that one, I'll let sleeping dogs lie where that's at. The last point, and I've experienced this, so please understand when I say this, I'm not just running off the mouth. I have experienced this firsthand. You can do everything right. You can, um, you can literally do everything in your power to do everything which is right and still lose everything. Uh, when I went through a divorce, I lost my home, my preps. <coughs> I mean, I just... Guys, I don't even want to get I don't even want to get a bill of materials sheet and start marking down the crap that I lost. So I'm just going to tell you that you need to have a mentality where it's okay if you do lose this stuff because you know the most high I believe it's in the book of Baruch, it talks about that the most high has the ability to take a man from nothing and elevate him, pretty much like that. And I'm just summarizing that. And you know, you look at what happened to Yosef in Egypt. Um, how that he was sold to slave and then became the uh, pretty much I would say modern to modern day the prime minister of Egypt. 
Um, I think that's quite a jump and an elevation in no time flat. So, you know, I have seen in Scripture uh, examples where that not only where Baruch, in the book of Baruch, it says that, but you can see right there where that, that actually did take place. So, um, you know, but we need to find a peace in our mind that if you do lose everything, it's not going to be that hard on you because you need to have that mentality that um, whatever I've lost, um, just like the Job you know, Job went through, he can restore you a hundredfold. Um, and so, guys, that's my ten points. That's like my top ten. There's so many things when going off grid. I mean, you, you, we could just talk for days and days and days on end, but like literally the power top ten for going off grid. These are the factors you need to keep in mind because this is the stuff, this is the meat on the bone uh, that everybody else don't talk about. And I run into it all the time working for people, uh, doing construction and doing off grid. Um, and I've seen some people do some amazing things uh, and, and have a wonderful life off grid now and uh, talk to them, visit with them. And it's just warms my soul to know that, um, you know, my life wasn't in vain. Uh, and you leave a, your life is your legacy. What you do in this life, is that's your legacy. And it thrills me to know that I made an impact in people's lives where now not only are they out of the system, but they're free. Um, and not only that, this has been made free by Yahushua um, and Most High Yah. Uh, in their lives. So anyway, I'm going to read comments real quick, catch it up, and then I want to tell you all um, that's sticking around in the house tonight, I want to tell you all about that movie Replicas because somebody up in the house told me about that uh, earlier this week. I think it was earlier this week on the live. Um, and I watched it, dude. I just mind blown. All right, so anyway, uh, let's see. Somebody said, so happy for you and your lovely bride-to-be. She's beautiful. I wish you all much happiness. Thank you so much. Uh, somebody said, you're, uh, somebody said, you're telling the truth, brother. Uh, Uriah Israel said, first time commenting, but I always watch. Thanks for all you do. Hey, appreciate you. Glad to have you in the house. Um, now, here's the deal. Somebody told me to watch Replicas, and it's got Keanu Reeves in it. Now, I want y'all to understand something. Um, there was a saying said, and I know, now listen, we're going down the rabbit hole. Okay, so I just want everybody to know that, you know, we're, we're done talking crap in here. We're going deep down a rabbit hole. Somebody said that, um, and I got to look this up, but apparently they've been uh, dabbling in cloning since the 30s. All right, since the 30s. Now, people say that there's a saying out there also that, like, pretty much whatever technology we have right now, um, that the government's, like, you know, decades and decades ahead. So, with these factors in mind, I was watching that movie, and so apparently, and I don't want to, spoiler alert, I don't want to ruin this movie for you guys, um, but so Keanu Reeves is this, like, scientist guy or whatever, his wife, his son, and his daughter, and his youngest daughter, they all get killed in the wreck. He gets the brain stem off the uh, cortex or whatever, downloads their consciousness, all right, pretty much, and puts it back into a, uh, uh, a cr another being that they grew lab. I mean, they pretty much recreated these, these family members, put their consciousness back in them. Not only did he put a consciousness back in them, but because they didn't have enough can incubators or whatever to make another person at the time, uh, they deleted one of the family members uh, out of their other people's minds and memory. As you're going through this, you think about it, you're like, you know, in the scripture where it talks about they uh, that the Most High wipe all tears away, I'm like, you're probably going to, you know, there. who knows, when that gets wiped away, will the memory of those that don't make it to the kingdom be wiped away as well? Um, not only that, it was amazing because, like, these people had been damaged, their body was damaged, but then their consciousness was put right back into a body that was similar to their same. Uh, you know, it was their same body pretty much regrown. And their memory was put back into them. So literally, they woke right back up and it was like business as usual. And guys, I'm going to tell you, like Hollywood, as wicked as it is, dude, they are in the know on this stuff. And that is literally, that movie is like literally the closest thing that I can imagine to how the resurrection will be. Uh, to some extent, not 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 saying that like we're going to be lab grown and stuff like that. Now, please don't take what I'm saying out of context. I'm just saying the consciousness factor because these people died. They take their consciousness out of them. They put it in another thing. And as soon as the body and the consciousness, and they get breath again, and they're you know reanimated. It's like poof. It's like right back to business as usual. And there was another movie like that, um, similar that had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. And every time they were replicated, there was a dot under the eye that showed how many times that body had been replicated. But the, the reason I say all that's to say this. There is so much that 
the elite and Hollywood and all these people put out in these movies um, that there is there's a lot of truth to it mingled with science fiction and error and um, you know uh, kicked up to look like something grand. Um, but man, that movie, guys, it just uh, it blowed my mind how close to um, a reality that could be. Um, and somebody said. Um, Predictive programming, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, somebody said, sorry, I didn't get to catch you in the beginning. I was down in the garden, didn't know you come on. And by the way, congratulations, son's getting married. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, um, on behalf of me and Abby, I really appreciate it. Somebody said, shalom from northern Idaho. Shalom, family. Hey. Uh, shalom, Miss Paca uh, family there from Mississippi. Uh, guys, I, I tell you what, um, I hope you have been enjoying this show. Uh, I think we're two months into this thing now. Um, and I hope the content that's been coming is good. Um, like I said, I'm going to enjoy visiting with you tomorrow night. I'm going to be back in the studio um, and chat up with you tomorrow night. And then following that, I'm going to be taking a two-week siesta uh, from this channel. We'll be back at the first of next month um, and lay the hammer down again wide open. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang out in here a few, for a few more minutes. If anybody's got any thoughts or anything they want to share in here or questions about off-grid, um, guys, I've been in the field now a long time doing this. Excuse me, and I've been doing industrial work long before I went out there and started bolting people down off grid. So, if you got a question about off grid living or something like that, here's a free consultation tonight. You know, because I charge people two hundred fifty dollars for in in uh, office consultation, five hundred plus travel if we go out to them, and if it's out of the country, a thousand plus travel. So, right here. You know, in the next 10 minutes, you got a question about off-grid living or something. Here is a free one on the house. Um, you know, I'm in the, in the building tonight to help people. Um, and like I said, those 10, though, that I just shared, that's probably, that's probably the 10 I think that people do not consider enough upon. Um, and I literally have to stay on top of people just with point one because I'm like, do not call me to work. Do not pay me to work for you. When I'm going to end up showing up and you ain't got enough money to finish the project that you're paying me to do, I don't want to get in that pickle. I'd rather not work for you at all. So you're not being up, I'm not being up, and nothing's messed up. Uh, somebody said, what's a good trailer frame to start a tiny house build? Shalom. Uh, so guys, if you want to contact Incredible Tiny Homes, um, there's a trailer company um, that you can purchase trailers for a pretty reasonable price through them. And like I said, that's IncredibleTinyHomes.com. Um, and they got uh, a bunch of different trailer options if you're going to build a tiny house. But I really encourage you to buy one through them. Not just because it's my friends, not just because it's Randy and them, but because, dude, there has been a bazillion houses leave that place. Um, and I can't tell you how many I, frank literally, I think last summer I spent with Randy into the winter, I probably framed over 60 or 70 houses on those trailers. I did that. Plumbed them. Ran the electrical input for the 30 amp, 50 amp service. Guys, I mean, like, I literally, that was my thing while I was in town not working. When I'd go over and help Randy um, do that. And I, I'm telling you, I've seen so many of those trailers go out. And they don't get, like, twisted up, mangled up. I mean, they're really quality stuff. Um, and, and it's one of those things you get what you pay for in life, too. Uh, somebody said, I really enjoy this show. We need it. There are very few who tell the truth. That is so true, guys. That is so true. Um, and, guys, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And I, the number one thing I'll always tell you is you better think for yourself. And whatever the Most High Oz Word says, that's the end of the road. It don't matter what I think, feel, or want. It's whatever thus saith Yahuwah. Um, now, somebody said, uh, uh, Uriah Israel said, Do you think the time to flee into the wilderness? Do you think the time to flee in the wilderness? I want to put me a camper in the woods, but I don't know where to start. Well, now, you know, the thing with campers is if you can afford to get a good used one, hey, go for it. But now, if you need to finance one, so be it. Uh, but, guys, I jump on stuff right now before, if you don't have the shelter situation in place, and I'm going to talk about this conference in my segment, is you really need to take and get a hold of that now. Because my thing is, is like, um, you know, I'm thinking about getting one of those uh, modular little mini log things or whatever, um, and that's something me and Abby's looked at and it's like if I need to finance it right now so be it but you know like I got the tiny house of my own to fall back on right now um, but I really want to sell that to somebody if anybody wants a 8x21 tiny house literally went to check out the step stage just needs a little bit of touch up where um, tires went flat 
uh, where it sat so long that the uh, uh, rain ran back into uh, uh, some of the roof area and got a little bit moldy. And then, of course, the bathroom's in a remodel right now. But anybody wants a cheap tiny house for $12,000, man, hit me up at my email. I'll hook you up. Um, you can come get that sucker tomorrow because um, I just ain't got time to finish it up right now. But um, somebody said, I was wondering, what do you think about people with mental illness and being saved or not? Gosh, that's a deep subject, Blue Dream. I swear, I feel like a lot of mental illness is affliction by demonic spirits, and I swear we need to pray over our loved ones that that that, that they uh, uh, fast and pray that that affliction be taken away from them. Because I swear a lot of that, I think, is demonic. And I'm not saying your loved ones are demonic. I'm saying that people get afflicted by uh, demonic things. Somebody said, what size solar would you recommend for daily living? Well, guys, it all depends upon the loads and the demands. Um uh, because that dictates the size of your solar system. Um, and let me give you a rough breakdown on that. Uh, the averages on tiny house solar systems, and I'm talking quality. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, look, we went and done a guy's project in Kansas. It was like a $100,000 job. Like, Man, I about fall off a chair. The company that actually priced it to him for us priced it for in the $300,000 range. We saved the dude hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? So when I tell you these figures, they're pretty pretty solid. Uh, average tiny house install can run anywhere between seven thousand dollars to fourteen thousand dollars. A small structure, small cabin to a moderate home with only critical loads. Now, now the the small cabin stuff like that can have all its loads, but like a home with critical loads, a large home, you know that can run anywhere between low twenties to early thirties. The the you know low thirties. Um, a large home can run anywhere between the high twenties to you know, the low 40s, even up to the 50 grand. And the reason a lot of solar installs cost so much is because batteries nowadays, the quality ones that's like six-year warranty, cost like $650 a battery. Just do the math on that. I mean, 10 batteries, that's $6,500. You know, it adds up fast. Um, and you need a lot of batteries, guys, to do it right. And so anyway, then, like, you do a whole farm, you do a whole compound off grid, I mean, you can get in the hundreds of thousands of stars. So, I mean, that kind of give you an idea on, on cost um, right there on solar stuff. Um, you, follow, you, you do follow the... Lunar Sabbath, am I correct? Yes, I, guys, I, I do it off uh, World's Last Chance, the way that World's Last Chance dot com does it, off their calendar app. That's how I do it. I used to do First Visible Crescent, how I started off the month. Um, I do it dawn after conjunction. I'll knock on no one. Listen, when Mashiach comes back, when they say to be there on Sabbath, when they say to be there on, this is how we count off New Moon. Luke's gonna be right there if I'm counted worthy to come in. Um, no questions asked. I, but I'm done with SAT Day, SUN Day worship on the pagan Roman calendar. That stuff's got to go. Um, and anybody that's coming to the conference want to learn about the calendar, Brother Troy Miller is going to be speaking about the calendar. Guys, you don't want to miss it. Somebody said, how do you know how much watts can service an apartment fridge, one small deep freezer in one room with an AC? So here's the deal, guys. Um, the way that you look at that stuff is like the average refrigerator, 500 watts. Deep freeze, about 300. A small air conditioning unit like a window unit is 500, 600 watts. So you want to size your inverter appropriately. So like a 2,000 watt inverter would power that. Um, and then, of course, you'd want about to match that uh, usage. Uh, so you'd want to put in like 2,000 watts of solar in that at the minimum. And so that's kind of how you you, you, you calc help calculate that stuff out. Um, somebody says, does the Bible day we are to leave... Does the Bible... Oh, does the Bible say we are to leave the cities? Guys, I would get out of the cities. Um, no doubt about it, just because of how dangerous it is, and it's getting out there nowadays. Um, somebody said, hello, Luke, just got here. Uh, hey, brother, how you doing? Um, somebody said, y'all tells his children in Israel to make their way back home to Israel to avoid his anger, to avoid his anger up on back. Guys, forgive me when I butcher all his comments. I don't do it on purpose. Um, it, it, the, the feed scrolls, and I just have such a hard time catching up with it sometimes. Uh, yeah, I just feel like we need a judgment's going to be all throughout the world, you know. But my goodness, America, America's just going to get slapped right upside the face. I know I'd do it. I, matter of fact, I'd make an example out of America first. Uh, somebody said, Shalom, I'm working on a $50,000 budget. Where you start? Uh, okay, Sherry, hit me back in the comment. I'm listening and I'm looking right now. Um, what you already got? You know, just give me a punch list. What you already got? So let, let's prioritize from there. Uh, guys, I'm going to hang out here for another 10 minutes. Uh, 10 15 minutes and I'll cut out. Um, somebody said, Thanks, Luke. Somebody said, When is the conference again? It's August 15th and 16th of this year. 
Now, the 14th before the conference is going to be the baptism that day. And guys, you can check it out at soundonthelaudcry.com. Links in the video description below. Tickets are free. Okay, tickets are free. Now, anybody wants to donate the conference, we still got um, audio equipment rentals to pay for and like the projector thing to pay for. It's still like, I don't know, probably about, uh, we still need to drop about another thousand dollars toward all the rental stuff. So anybody wants to contribute, cool. If you don't, at the end of the day, I'm going to be picking up tabs so it, it ain't no water under the bridge to me. Uh, somebody said, your best option is to build underground because the winds are going to be so bad you won't be able to live underground. I, guys, I love Hobbit houses. I think the Hobbit house thing is epic. Um, you know, earth bag homes, uh, cargo container homes in the ground. There's a lot of options uh, and stuff like that for underground living. I, I, think, I think that's great. <clears throat> I'm all for it. If I'm not using some devices, I unplug them and turn off lights when not needed. Absolutely. Somebody said, what size tiny house would you recommend for a family of 8 to 10? I have a big family. Listen, I mean, no disrespect to say this, and I love y'all. When you get past, like, two to five people, a tiny house life just ain't going to fly. Um, now, if you have a couple different tiny houses, now, that that's different. But, I mean, just, uh, uh, that that's that's just too much. Uh, somebody said, I would suggest build your library and learn at least a year's worth of MMA. There you go. Um, so a 2000 watt costs how much? Um, you know, a 2000 watt solar system, just a small setup, something like that. I mean, you could have just a few thousand bucks in it, guys. I mean, you can do some of this stuff yourself. Um, pr pretty convenient when you do the small stuff like that. Um, uh, it's okay. All things possible. Y'all absolutely. Somebody said, um, uh, Elohim bless you. Uh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm just not saying pagan terms anymore. Uh, somebody said, hello people. So he said, I live here in Boston. I'm planning on moving out. I always told myself that if I were Elohim, I would strike Boston for the fact of what it represents for America. Boston Tea Party, best schools, etc. So he said, where can I buy that shirt? Um, it was We the People Holsters is where I think I've seen that shirt. Um, Tiffany Smart, thank you for the donation. She said, I'm in Buffalo, so I can't make the conference, but every little bit helps, guys. I need to make a note on the conference page that we are live streaming that. I think Brother Joel and Abby's going to be making sure um, that day that we've got it streaming on uh, Loud Cry Ministries YouTube and we've got it streaming over here. Uh, what solar you recommend and why? Um, well, it, I, I, there's a couple different solar things out there that I can offer. Um, you, you know, here's the deal. Uh, it, it, it really varies. Um uh, and, and I'm not just saying this to get a consultation out of you guys. Like, listen, if, if you want to get in-depth on this and you got the project laid out, we can really break it down. But uh, it, it, the the main thing is, is um, you know, the load demands. You need to figure up your load demands, and that guides everything else from there um, as to what you need. And then you always want to over-calculate 20% power output um, because just like a friend of mine that I helped him go off-grid, he literally hasn't been without power yet, I'll praise most high y'all, even on rainy days, but we over-factored his system massively. Because uh, you don't even have a generator backup. Like when solar's out, solar's out. It's crank up the wood stove and hard times has come, you know. Um, somebody said, uh, yeah, that's a good point. It's, it varies what zone you live in, too. I, I say with solar, always factor five and a half hour days because you never want to think about summertime because summertime, man, it can come, go, come, and go, come, and go. Um, or or, or, or you, you got plenty of solar in the summertime, but in the wintertime, man, it can just come and go. Somebody said, good info, Luke. You made my wife mad because you told the truth. Lot's wife looked back and was turning a pillar of salt. Oh, shoot, J.D., I, I don't know what I said to make her mad, but, um, man, I'm just trying to trying to be as real with people in here as possible, guys. Uh, y'all bless you all, brothers and sisters. Stay faithful even when faced with death. Love y'all. Thank you, Luke, for teaching the truth. It's so rare. Uh, yeah, okay. Hey, love y'all. Uh, guys, I just, man, I tell y'all, if I am faced with death, I just hope. I literally hope it's a firing squad or a guillotine. I just do not want to be thrown in a cell and tormented like the poor saints did in the past by the Roman church um, and then the Roman Colosseum during the uh, Constantine Empire and all that. Oh, my goodness, please just let it be swift if it's got to come. Um, somebody said, awesome, I can't wait to hear Pastor Dow. That man had me reading my Bible. I became awakened. Um, you know, Pastor Dow's segment is going to be about building a community, and they got like 10 communities. And listen, guys, I know some of y'all don't agree with Pastor Dow. Some of y'all like him, some of you don't. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm going to be straight up with you. The only thing that I really uh, had an issue with um, is, you know, how he counts off Sabbath, how I count off Sabbath. Um, and you know what? Um, 
I'm not going to beat up on everybody because of the differences. That don't mean I approve or disapprove people. Uh, and I'm not trying to ride the skirt the fence here. What I'm just telling you is, like, I called on these people for a specific set of skills. And, like, dude, 10 communities, guys, uh, obviously something they're doing is working. So, I mean, that, that, should, that should be some good stuff to learn from if you're looking for building a community, you know? Um... Uh, Anyway, uh, somebody said checked out Arch Cabins. Very affordable. Very nice. Um, Green River Cabins is a nice one. I think it's Green River Homes or Green River Cabins. They're out of South Carolina. That's the ones I've been looking at uh, on the cabin thing. Uh, bigger than tiny homes, yeah. Somebody said we need the truth. It's the only thing to make us free. Absolutely. Somebody said, uh, Lucas, congrats again. Enjoy your two weeks off. See you when you come back on. Guys, I'll be back with you tomorrow night, y'all willing. And then I'll be back again in two weeks. Uh, we're going to chat it up one more time. Somebody said, Mark, y'all on forehead. That's right. Uh, that's the only way it's going to get it done, uh, serving y'all. Can't, can't take the mark of the beast. we got to have it still on the forehead. Somebody said, what about an off-grid camper, homes, or vans? Guys, I've, I've done stuff with the uh, off-grid vans and campers. You can get it done. You just It's minimalistic lifestyle living. Uh, somebody said, I had a dream when I was nine that I was beheaded by way of guillotine for the most high. Uh, guillotine for me, the most high prepared me for it. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. I don't know if stream cut out. Uh, somebody said, Shalom, Luke. 50,000 is starting from ground zero land. May or may not be an obstacle. Um, just shoot me an email, Sherry. I'll see what I can do to help you. Uh, somebody said, Pastor Dow, I heard him use profanity on a video. Yeah, guys, now listen. I try to keep it clean over here. Um, I just prefer not to curse. That's, that's just how I roll over here, and we've kept it clean eight years. We're going to keep it clean a long time. Uh, Sylvia, say, thank you, hon, for $19.99 uh, cent super chat. Thanks for being you. I appreciate that, hon, so much, guys. Um, we're going to get that conference paid up. Uh, somebody said, keep up the great work, brother. Shalom. Uh, man, that dream felt so real, dude. I'm telling you guys, some of these dreams people have, it, it it is it, it you literally wake up in cold sweats uh i told people to build communities too now that there is no work lots of rights etc they start calling my phone i'm here like i'm moving so when you knock at my door it will be someone else living yeah yeah i'm telling you right now and right now is a great time to exit out of the system man out of people's lives uh you know cause um because people are so distracted it's a great time to get out the system uh, somebody said I woke up trembling. Oh man, I'll tell you, I had this dream one time that um, I, f I fell off a cliff on a train. The train went off the track, and it was on the side of a cliff, and and it was falling. And I literally felt the fall. And as I hit bottom, I woke up. Dude, crazy dream, crazy dream. All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna wrap it up because we got to go to the uh, wedding venue early in the morning, get things set up for the wedding. Uh, but listen, love all y'all. Uh, I'll try to be back up in here tomorrow night, uh, fellowship with you, um, and then like I said, we're gonna be out on two weeks siesta, guys. Um, as always, till we see you again here up in the house. Hope the Most High Yah Baruch you and keep you, and make His face shine upon you, show you favor, and give you shalom, my friends, in Yahushua name.